My target on gold is 3000 this year, what I call pre-bust. It doesn't have to coincide with the top of the equity market, but I think it's likely to be this year, um, and it's you know short-term move. I think we're going to see pauses along the way, but generally, you had your consolidation, so don't sit around looking for another one, because I think this thing is, uh, you know, you're just getting started back down. We've had a, a good couple of weeks in silver, and I think there's there's that party is just getting started. So I think silver can, and my long held target is sixty. I've said recently, if it breaks sixty, you could run to seventy five very quickly. So sixty is still my target, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's low. In 2024, there's a lot happening in the financial world, particularly with gold and silver. Macro strategist David Hunter is making some bold predictions about their prices. He believes gold could hit $3,000 per ounce by the end of the year, and silver might reach $60 per ounce, possibly even $75 if it breaks that barrier. Hunter also thinks that the dollar will keep getting weaker, which could be good news for gold and silver prices. He also believes that other currencies, like the euro and the yen, will do well compared to the dollar. Gold prices have been going up for a while now. In 2020, they went up a bit, then again in 2021 and 2022. Now, they're breaking records and getting higher. When something breaks records, more people want to buy it, making the prices go even higher. David Hunter thinks this trend will continue. He says even if the stock market doesn't do well, gold and silver could still go gold. up had uh, basically a triple top, maybe even a quadruple top there before it broke out. Um, you know, started back in 2020. It ran up to the, you know, the high 2000 area, uh, went back down, came back up in 21 and again in 22. And we're finally breaking through um, to new highs. And once it broke out, you started seeing people uh, kind of jump on the bandwagon. So, so you've got legs there. I my target on gold is three thousand this year. Um, what I call pre bust um, doesn't have to coincide with the top of the equity market, but I think it's likely to be this year. Um, and it's you know short term move. I think we're going to see pauses along the way, but generally. You had your consolidation, so don't sit around looking for another one because I think this thing is, uh, you know, you're just getting started. Gold's at new, new all-time highs, obviously. Silver's a long ways from its old highs and has been the laggard for a long time. As you say, the gold-silver ratio is up, you know, was up at 89, I think, and is just starting to come back down. We've had a, a good couple weeks in silver, and I think there's there's that party is just getting started. So I think silver can, and my long held target is sixty. I think that can be seen, if not uh, by the end of this year, and I think it very well could be by the end of this year, uh, be early next. So um, you know, sixty, and I've said recently. If it breaks 60, you could run to 75 very quickly. So 60 is still my target, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's low. That's a long way. I mean, silver's you know just been in the kind of low 20s range for quite a while. Finally, has moved up to 27, and I think could move very quickly to the mid 30s, and then maybe pause and run again, or certainly move up into the low 30s and pause. Uh, I think a lot of upside in the miners as a result of this. You know, and I. I think investors who have been disillusioned by particularly silver, but by the miners, um, because it took so long, you know, a lot of those that were bullish and expected these breakouts before have kind of thrown in the towel. It's taking them a while to believe this rally because I think, like, oh, I've seen this before, I'm not buying it. And so it, it's, you know, that's a healthy skepticism that will keep these things running. In the bust, you know, as I say, there's going to be a melt up in the equity markets and then a uh, bear market following that that will be accompanied by a global bust, which is a, a big financial crisis and an economic downturn. In the bust, you could see, let's say I'm right about the 3,000 target on gold. There's nothing that says it can't come back here. So gold could go from three thousand back to, um, you know, twenty twenty one or two hundred, um, or 
you know, which was, you know, back to the breakout point, basically. Um, and there's no, there's no magic to my target that it couldn't, you know, it certainly could be exceeded. So you might be, you know, 33 or four or 500 before it stops and then comes back and it may not come back as far. Who knows? Um, silver is going to be the more volatile metal. If it goes to 60, I doubt that it comes all the way back to the low twenties, but it could, you know, if, if the stock market's going to drop 80%, there's nothing that says silver can't drop by 60% or 70%. So, you know, it's a much more economically sensitive and volatile metal. Um, so there may be another opportunity in the bust, but between now and my targets, I think the you know, you're not going to get these kind of opportunities again. You know, they'll... Hunter's forecast is based on his analysis of the weakening US dollar and the downward trend in interest rates. He anticipates a significant global economic downturn, which he refers to as a global bust. After the global bust, central banks like the Federal Reserve will have to print a lot of money to fix the economy. This will cause inflation, which means prices for things will go up a lot. David Hunter thinks inflation could reach as high as 25% by the end of the decade or the early 2030s. When inflation goes up, the stock market usually doesn't do well because interest rates go up too. This makes it harder for companies to borrow money and grow, so their stock prices go down. However, there are some types of companies that might still do well during this time. These include companies that produce commodities like gold and silver, because their prices tend to go up during inflation. Also, companies that make things like metals and industrial goods might do well, because these are needed to build things and fix infrastructure. During this economic downturn, Hunter expects gold prices to remain relatively stable compared to stocks, but he also warns that gold may still experience some decline. He believes that despite discussions about moving away from the US dollar in international trade, it will take a long time for any other currency to replace it. Therefore, he predicts that the dollar will continue to be the dominant currency for trading in the next five years, although it may face increasing pressure later in the decade. I see this a lot in the, uh, in the markets is people kind of have recency bias, whatever they remember as the most recent actions or they think that's forever or that's that's always going to happen we've had times when when the metals um go with the market and times when they are very much uh counter to the market um if you look at the first decade of of this century you know from 2001 to 2011 we had a huge bull run and that was also a time when we had pretty good stock market um, at during periods of that time, so so there have been times wh like this when the market, the stock market, can be going up and the metals can be going up at the same time. So I had that question a lot when I was bullish, when everybody was bearish, and they said, you know, they're not going to go up together. And I said, I think they are. Um, and so I, you know, we're just. I think you have to step back and realize that. There's no one formula for these things. Sometimes they move with the market, and I think this is one of those times. I have been on record to saying that the highs in the stock market this year, and as I say, I think 7,000 on the S&P is, is my target. If we reach that high or whatever high we reach this year, and if that's the secular top I'm calling for, I don't believe we'll get back to those highs or anything close to those highs again in the next couple decades and maybe longer we this is a major major final thrust into a top and the reason for that is because first we're going to have this 80 percent bear market in the global bust uh, you know global bust is something i don't pe people hear the name the the term but i don't think they really understand how significant that is you know it's nothing like what they've lived with in post-world war ii era well you know it's going to be a a uh, a short-lived, I think, relatively short-lived, you know, 12 or 18 months. But you're going to be wondering what's coming out of that uh, because it's, you know, bank failures, it's a lot of things. So it's 2008-9 was kind of a precursor to it. So you you got a pretty good taste of what a financial crisis looks like. 
uh, this one I think is going to be worse. So, but coming out the other side of that, because the central banks are going to have to respond so aggressively to that bust, the printing of money to a degree we've never seen in this world, and 2020 was beyond anything we'd ever seen, this will be four or five times that, uh, will trigger an inflation cycle in the post-bust era, meaning you know, 26, 2026 and beyond, culminate in inflation getting up as high as 25% in this country by the end of the decade or early next decade. Uh, if that's the case, that really shrinks PE multiples, market multiples. You know, stocks are very interest sensitive. And if interest rates are going down as they were the last 40 years, generally trending down, it boosts price earnings multiples. It boosts the market multiple tremendously. You get the reverse of that where rates are moving towards high double digits and price earnings multiples or a market multiple that's 20 or 25 can move back down to single digits. So that puts a real damper on equity markets. Um, There will still be many stocks that will perform in that environment, mostly commodity producers, you know, uh, precious metal miners, um, industrial companies that serve those industries. So there'll be there'll be places to make plenty of money in the next cycle following the bust. Hunter foresees a surge in inflation due to actions taken by central banks to counter the economic bust. He expects this inflation to rise significantly by the end of the decade. Driven by extensive money printing by central banks, Hunter suggests that assets like gold and silver are likely to perform well during this period of high inflation. But he advises investors to be cautious and understand the risks involved. In addition to discussing the outlook for precious metals, Hunter also talks about the stock market. He predicts a steep decline in stock markets, with us equity indexes potentially dropping by as much as 80%. He advises investors to be prepared for a volatile ride and suggests considering assets like treasury bonds and the U.S. dollar for protection during the economic downturn. Bank of America also thinks gold prices will keep going up in 2024. They predicted that gold would reach $2.400 per ounce if the Federal Reserve lowered interest rates in the first part of the year. Even though this might not happen, they still think gold prices will stay high for the rest of the year. Looking ahead, it's hard to say for sure what will happen to the economy and the stock market. Economic trends and government policies will play a big role. For example, if the government decides to print more money or lower interest rates, this could cause inflation to go up even more, which might be good for gold and silver prices, but bad for the stock market. If you enjoyed this video, Hit that like button and subscribe for more. Let me know in the comments what other content you'd like to see. Thanks for watching.